The last step of the packaging here will be what's called the blister form or the blister pack. And this is going to be a vacuum formed plastic shell uh, around the product that meets up with the cardboard. And in the top view, I'll draw a curve, an initial curve for that, that profile. And I, I don't have grid snap and I don't have object snaps on. And I'm thinking about this uh, just as an overall really soft form. Something like this. And maybe I'll come back into the top here and just edit this a little bit, get this a little bit nicer. Perfect. And then turn off the control points. Okay, I'll use the offset command now to offset this out. And um, maybe I'll do this at like five millimeters, something like that. And then take my packaging. Uh, now remember, there's a bunch of things here. There's a poly surface, that's the cardboard backing, and there's the surface. So let's group these together, control G, and then scale this using shift to keep it uniform. Just like that. Okay. And then let's take a look in the front view here or the right view and drag one of these curves up just like this. Tap Alt to make a copy. Okay, so we've got our curves. And we can now do a loft. Select the curves in order, one, two, and three. Press enter when done. I like to make sure the seam is on either the top or the bottom. Um, if it's in the side here, um, click these dots and move it before hitting enter to continue in the loft command. And the style um, of the loft, this is probably what you get by default. Do not simplify in normal. I'll change the style to loose like that. And let me turn on my ISO curves here in the display mode so you can see this. And you see how the ISO curves are flowing like that and as it goes around the corner, it kind of sweep this way. If you use the rebuild option and then a control point count of like 100 or 200, click preview, it can really even that out and make it nicer, I find. Just a more even surface for this purpose, I like it. And then click OK. Now this is one surface and the seam of it if I turn on edges as well here, the seam of it is right here. So I want to split it on the other end. If I turn off ISO curves, you can see that seam a little bit better right there. So I want to split it right on the other end by an ISO curve. So I'll use the split command, click the ISO curve option, and I'll choose shrink equals yes. So that the control point structure of the surface shrinks to the new split boundary. And then we'll use blend surface here. Uh, auto chain is off, so I pick up just one side, enter and then second side, enter. I'll link the handles together and drag down the handles together like that and click OK. And join those together into one like that. Now I want to take this surface and 
offset it into a solid. Right now it doesn't have a physical thickness. And this is an important thing if you're actually going to ray trace or render the translucent material uh, like a blister pack. Uh, a lot of render engines won't render it properly unless it has a physical thickness. The refraction of it won't look correct. So select the poly surface, use offset SRF. I'm going to flip this direction so it's offsetting out and using the solid option and enter. So now we have a poly surface with a little bit of a thickness to it and that's going to work for the for the rendering. Let me select our curves and throw those on the curves layer which is hidden and then let's give a material uh, to this here, make it transparent, and also give it uh, that index of refraction of plastic for when we do render. And we'll turn off uh, our edges here so we can see this a little bit better. And maybe it needs just um, a little bit of reflection as well. And that's the finished model. Um, in the final step, we'll look at ray tracing this and um, just give you an idea of what it looks like with the proper refraction for the translucent materials.